My name is Corlin Carr, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about genetically modified foods. According to WebMD, experts say that 60 to 7 percent of processed foods in the United States are genetically modified in one way or another. If any of you guys had a bowl of cereal for breakfast, you most likely consumed genetically modified food without even knowing it. Now you're probably curious as to what that can mean, which today I will hopefully tell you in my speech. I will start off with what genetically modified foods are, then go to what some common ones are, and end with the pros and cons associated with them. So first off, what genetically modified foods are. Found at discovery.com, this is where the genetic <coughs> makeup or DNA of a food or crop is altered. According to Greg Goff, director of the Biotechnology Pro Project at the Center for Science and the Public Interest, current genetically modified foods only contain one additional gene making them relatively safe to produce and consume in his eyes. But, it's also, but also current government regulations do not require genetically modified foods to be put on labels. Next, the commonly genetically modified foods. Listed at discovery.com, some of the more common genetically modified foods would be corn, golden rice, potatoes, salmon, soybeans, and tomatoes. Corn is a big one, as pointed out at ehow.com, because of high fructose corn syrup. We, are, we find this ingredient listed on several food labels. High fructose corn syrup can be found in cereals, soft drinks, yogurts, salad dressings, and even some cough syrups. Animal feed is another important genetically modified food because it is directly or indirectly put onto our tables. Soybeans and corn are found in livestock feed, which is passed through the animal system and it comes out in their meats, milks, and eggs, which is what we consume. And finally, the pros and cons of genetically modified foods found at WebMD. The pros. One, genetically modified foods have increased pest and disease resistance. Two, a drought tolerance is built up. And three, the, the increased food supply is created through larger and faster growing crops or foods. An argument made at E or at Farmaid.org to promote genetically modified foods is that they support the overpopulated world and can help fight world hunger. This is partially because genetically modified foods grow faster, but also because they have the increased pest and disease resistance. Now to the cons. One, there can be allergens and toxins introduced to the foods. Two, the nutrient contents can be adversely changed. And three, a superweed can be created that we can't control with herbicides, and to date we actually don't have a way to handle this if this were to arise. <clears throat> and a big one is the accidental contamination of genetically modified foods with organically grown crops. Um, an example of this type of contamination is when bees carry pollen from a genetically modified crop into an organic field and then they cross fertilize the plants. It's a big deal because organic farmers can lose their farming license and the organic farming label. And they, they actually are forced to sell the crop at a lower price because it's no longer considered organic, which they lose a lot of profit because they spend the time and money growing it as organic, even though it ends up not being organic. And to wrap up my speech, today I've tried to leave you with an understanding of what genetically modified foods are where you can find them, and the setbacks you can encounter or benefits you could gain from them. Experts seem to be split as to whether or not the pros outweigh the cons, um, and vice versa, but my goal today was to get you thinking about what you could be possibly be putting into your body. So, please keep in mind that once the genetics of a food have been tampered with, you cannot destroy them, or destroy the creation. So, thank you.